So for me, um, the lights, I do find that I'm more sensitive to it. And every time I bring it up to people, they always just think it's in my head. Or I'm just thinking too much about it. But I'm not thinking too much about it. Don't but, let um, people tell you that it's all in your head and just ignore it. Hey guys, so in this video, I wanted to be talking about multiple sclerosis and nystagmus. I wanted to be talking about this because nystagmus is, um, was okay with me a while ago. But now, I'm just not really feeling it anymore. Now that I've started teacher's college and I'm just starting to like experience issues with having nystagmus right now, given that all my classes are online and I always have to stare at the goddamn screen, um, it distresses my eyes out too much. But I'm going to get into that in this video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I encounter with my nystagmus. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are also able to relate to some of the things I talk about or if you're not, I'd still love to hear from you. Um, and also message me on Instagram too if there's something else you want to talk about that's really bothering you. I would love to be there for you. Um, even if you're not an MSer, I don't care, just message me on Instagram. Before I even begin this video, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. It'd be cool to reach 1.1k. It's something, but um, yeah. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoy this video. For those of you who don't know, I'm currently doing Teacher's College. I started in May, so about a few months ago. Um, and with me doing Teacher's College, um, especially right now because of COVID, um, we basically use a system called Zoom. And on Zoom, our professors teach us on it, right? I can't really read anything on Zoom. Like, there's a chat function on Zoom and I can't read it, right? And the reason why I can't read it is because you can't actually zoom into anything on Zoom. Like why Zoom is called Zoom and you can't zoom into Zoom, I don't even know. Like I mentioned this before too and I got absolutely frustrated with it. I've literally become that kind of person to literally take my laptop, hold it this close to my face, and literally read. And what's so embarrassing about this is because during my very first class when I did that, I totally forgot I had my camera on. So I'm pretty sure people saw my nostrils and are probably laughing about it. But I was just like, honestly, I'm so, I was so fed up in May. But it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to deal with it for like the next year for however long COVID lasts for unless another pandemic starts because people keep supporting animal cruelty. Um, but yeah. <laughs> A little earlier on, I was okay having the segments, but once Teachers College started in May, I just really started having a difficult time being able to read the screen. Because as I mentioned, right, I can't zoom into Zoom, so I can't really read properly without holding my laptop so close to my face. But even then, sometimes, most of the times, I end up having double vision with letters. So it's like there's no win here. It's like I genuinely don't know what to do. I even wrote um, a blog post on this a while ago. I'll put it down below if you guys want to check it out. But I was happy, or I was happy with how everything was for me. Um, because the segments wasn't really affecting me. It wasn't until I would say later on last year where I was actually with um, a few people and when we were when I was with these few people um, we were trying to take a group picture. I'm not gonna say who it was but um, someone asked me to hold their phone and take a picture because I was in the front of everyone else and usually they always put the shorter person in the front because it just makes the most sense. <laughs> so yeah, it just doesn't help that I'm 5'3", and I was just like, oh, f and I have to hold the camera, and I, I knew very well my eyes were going to do that thing, because I was holding the camera or the phone in the corner, right? So I knew very well that both of my pupils were not going to align and look in the same direction, but I was just like, okay, just don't think about it too much, just take the freaking picture and just get it over with. And I took the picture, right, of all of us in the picture, um, and... It was just a little embarrassing because one of the person I uh, was in the picture looked at the picture and was like, Pri, what the f are your eyes doing? And I looked at the picture, basically one of my pupils were looking in a complete different direction as opposed to the other one. Um, <laughs> it was a little creepy, but you know what the thing is? I feel like it's even more creepy for me too because I have big eyes, so when my eyes do that in person, I feel like it creeps people out. And for me personally, I don't let these comments ever get to me because a lot of people just don't really understand me and that's fine. But it's like, it does create these insecurities for me in ways. But having um, my pupils not look in the same direction is a little creepy, I would say, in person to people. 
Um, and it is hard sometimes because it's like, I just don't like, I don't feel, once again, I don't feel the need to explain myself as to why my eyes do that. And people don't really ask about it, they'll just smile about it because they don't know what to say, right? Which is fine, but it's like, just don't smile about it. Like this one time, just don't smile because you're going to make me feel weird. And it's pretty stupid on my end because I did not realize this. I thought I saw a centipede and I freaked out. Um, <laughs> like, if your pupils don't look in the same direction and they're making these sudden rapid eye movements, of course your vision is going to shake here and there. And I just didn't put two and two together. It doesn't shake all the time, but it does shake quite a bit, I would say. Um, it's been getting better now, but it's still there. Another one that I was pretty stupid about was my balance. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say my balance is like 1 being really good, really bad to 10 being excellent. I would say my balance is probably like a 4 because it's not the great greatest, but I can still walk, you know what I mean? Um, but with my balance, I never realized that nystagmus also plays a role with my balance being terrible because, um, because my vision shakes, right, as I mentioned. My balance is not the best. Like, for instance, what I think is a straight line is not a straight line. Whereas the next person who doesn't have any issues with their vision, what they think is a straight line is most likely a straight line. But I just don't realize that because my vision is just really screwing with me. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to be talking about was the dizziness with my nystagmus. Um, this is actually difficult for me because I actually don't notice much dizziness when I'm walking around. I notice it the most when I'm laying straight on my back. So kind of like in the position that you're in in an MRI. I don't know how to word this. I think that's the best way I can describe it where your head is against the, whatever, the bed or the surface and um, your legs are just straight out and whatever, right? Which I will get into another video actually because I have an MRI next week. I don't like how it feels because it does feel like it's someone squeezing my brain at the same time and I don't like how it feels. What helps me with my nystagmus? There's two things that help me. Um, I feel like everything else just doesn't help me but you know what? Um, for those of you who have nystagmus as well, let me know in the comments below of the things that help you because maybe I could give that a try too and maybe it'll help me and I just don't realize it yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to hear from you. First one being is naps. For me, I like taking naps. Like, prior to being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I would take two hour naps every single day. How I even did that, I don't, guys, I don't even know. Um, but it wasn't until, I would say about a year and a half ago, where um, one of the doctors told me to take five minute naps. And even when he told me this, I was like, what the f are you smoking like <laughs> how are you supposed to take five minute naps like that just doesn't make any sense to me but guys um but to be honest with you I actually do take five minute naps every day um because they actually feel like two hours for me it's really weird because a lot of people are always like what the hell like how do you sleep for that little time and feel like it was two hours and it's like it feels like, it's almost like it trained my body in a way to just believe that that was two hours, but it wasn't really two hours, it was only like five minutes. Um, but yeah, so with taking naps and noticing that my pupils are just going a little wonky and whatnot, I find that this helps me because it kind of just relaxes my mind in a way and it relaxes my eyes and I just close my eyes and then just take a breather and do my thing, you know? Um, for the five minutes or even the ten if I really need it. Um, five minutes more pretty, wow. Um, <laughs> the only reason I also do this is because um, usually when I feel extremely tired, my eyes will go a little wonky and they'll just start to shake and I just need to close my eyes to just calm down. I think you guys should give it a try too because maybe it'll help you too. Another thing that helps me is um, not looking in the corner of my eye when people talk to me when they're standing right beside me. Why I'm saying this is because um, my doctor is the one that actually made me realize this. He does this thing with his finger where he'll hold his finger and tell me to follow his finger without, with my eyes without moving my head, right? And I'm pretty sure most of you MSers know what I'm talking about. Take his finger and move it like this and then move it like this and I have to follow his finger, right? And the only reason I'm not following my finger right now is because my eyes are probably going to be a little wonky 
and um, <laughs> yeah, so he'll move it, right? And sometimes he'll go like this, and sometimes he goes all the way over here. I'm like, why the f are you going behind my head? Like, I don't have eyes behind my head, but at the rate the segments is going, like, I my pupils are probably gonna go behind my f eyeball. So it's like, I will always position my body straight, and I find that that helps. But when I look at people from the corner of my eye, I notice that um, my pupils don't look in the same direction, and I don't like it. So I just avoid it, and I just move my entire body to talk to people. So the next thing I wanted to be talking about were the triggers to my nystagmus. Um, so I've listed down a few of them. Um, some of these triggers may not be the triggers for you, but as I mentioned, let me know in the comments below. So stress and fatigue are like the two, I guess, the basic ones where um, this is just a trigger for me. I feel like that's a trigger for everyone with MS. Um, but for me, it's a trigger with my nystagmus as well because when I'm really stressed out or I'm really tired, my eyes will just start to go wonky again. I don't know why, it just it is what it is. And it's, it's just my body's way to tell me that, you know what, pretty, you just need to close your eyes and sleep for a bit and then wake up and then do whatever you were doing. You know what I mean? And it just really sucks because a lot of the times I can't be productive with nystagmus <laughs> and I don't like that. But it's like, I'm trying to work around it so it's, it's okay, but it's like, ugh, I hate it sometimes. If you're that kind of person to just talk so much about something I don't really care to listen to, I just want you to know that I'm going to do one of the two things. One, I'm probably going to have hashtag MS fatigue. Um, and I'm probably going to fall asleep in the middle of you talking and you can't be pissed off at me because that's just my way to tell you to shut up because you're actually getting boring and you're actually making me feel tired by giving me all this information overload about something I just don't really care to listen to. I'm only saying this because when you're throwing information overload at me, it just kind of like in a way gets overwhelming for me trying to process what you're saying with everything that you're saying because I can't even remember what the first thing you said was to even start off the conversation. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> and two, my eyes are just going to go wonky again. And I just want you to know that because my eyes are big, this may freak you out. Um, because when people look in different directions, people tend to smile at me because they never know what to say when they see that my people look in different directions some of the times. So how about you do both of us a favor and, I don't know, um, maybe talk a little less? I usually do things that people test me to do in a way where it's like when they challenge me to do something that they think I can't do, I, I will try my best to prove them wrong, but then um, I end up stressing my eyes out and I just never win with this because <laughs> nystagmus is just really does screw me over. Focusing on something too much stresses my eyes out and by stressing my eyes out even more than I should be um, makes my vision just go a little more wonky and then nystagmus kicks in and it's just not a good time for me, if I'd be honest with you, so I do try to avoid that. I didn't realize that this was a thing, but apparently for people who have nystagmus, have light sensitivities, and I always thought it was stupid for thinking this way. So for me, um, the lights, I do find that I'm more sensitive to it, and every time I bring it up to people, they always just think it's in my head, or I'm just thinking too much about it, but... I'm not thinking too much about Don't it. Don't let but, people um, tell you that it's all in your head and just ignore it. For me, when things are really bright in my face, I have a hard time seeing things. So an example can be my phone. Um, usually when I turn off all the lights and I'm going to bed and I lay in bed, um, I have my phone in my face pretty much <laughs> trying to like scroll through Instagram for instance. Um, and I have two issues with this. One, MS fatigue is real and I will probably fall asleep the moment my head hits the pillow. But two, when I try to look at my phone, it hurts my eyes so much probably when I look at the screen for longer than five minutes when I'm like even messaging someone, right? And for the most part, I usually tell people that um, I'm going to go to bed because my eyes are acting up on me. I notice that my eyes start to hurt as well as I start seeing double of things. So like when I'm trying to read a text message, for instance, I will see double of letters for everything and it gets really like annoying for me. So then I just pretty much just put my phone away and just go to bed and just sleep it off. And usually by the morning, it's everything is okay, right? 
So that's pretty much it to my video. I'm, I'm literally trying to hold in my pee right now because I need to pee, but I want to end this video first. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you can relate to some of the things that I do talk about. Or if you're not, still let me know in the comments below. Um, and you can also message me on Instagram if any of you guys want to talk because I'd love to talk to you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. I'll post links down below as always. And I'll see you guys in my next video that I will post soon. Bye, guys. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I just finished Teacher's College. Um, no, I didn't. What am I saying? Okay, um... <laughs>